Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today in this video I would like to show you how to construct a poncho with a collar of squares. So this is the lavender and roses poncho that I recently made but as you can see it is too small for me. I am intending on uh, giving this to a child so I have made this but obviously I am going to finish it when I know who I am going to give it to but this is the body of the poncho so those are the lines but it all starts of course with the collar of the um, the squares so yes I have to add to it if I wanted to keep this for myself but I am going to give this away as a present so let's get started so for today's project uh, you will need squares obviously uh, whichever ones you want I am going to be using the Ophelia squares because obviously those are the ones that we have been using lately and it's a new square so I want to use it in projects for my original uh, lavender and roses poncho here I used lavender magenta clematis and lincoln for the colorway then of course i am still playing around with these colors so here i decided to make a square using citron magenta apple and cornish blue i think that's quite effective as well although it's very bright and of course today i am going to show you how to construct a poncho like that and i'm just going to use dandelion here uh, as a contrasting color because that way you will see very clearly where the seams are where it is that I have crocheted these squares together you will also need your hook of course I'm using a three and a half it's all Starcraft special decay which is normally prescribed as a four but you know I always have to use a size smaller then I've got my scissors and some darning needles as well Okay, so to make the squares, I'm going to refer you to the original video of the square. So I've made them in the colorway and I've made them in the uniform colorway as well. Now, there's a reason for that. Now, obviously, you can make yours, you know, whichever design you want and you don't have to make two that stand out. But for my demonstration purposes, um, I think it will be easier if I had to that stood out because that will give you a better idea of what I'm trying to tell you here okay so the two that I made that are going to stand out are the ones that is the front and the back tip so I'm going to lay these like this so this is going to be the tip at the front here is going to be my neck and this is going to be the tip at the back okay I think I might have to move my <laughs> camera up in a moment. Then I have made some more squares and they are an even number. So if you have two on one side, you have to have two on the other side. I have three, three. If you want to make your neck opening smaller or larger, you increase or decrease, is that right? Uh, with the number of squares, okay? So this, for example, let's start out with two. This is going to be my sides. That's what lies over your shoulder. And you're going to attach that to the front like this. And then, of course, you're going to have to attach it also to the back like that. Now, if this isn't big enough, for instance, this could serve perfectly well for a child's poncho. OK, so a smaller neck opening, um, you know, for a child but if you want to make it for yourself you might want to add another square but of course you have to add on both sides let me put the camera up okay so i think this gives you a clear picture of how it works so this is the front this is the back and then these are over your shoulders and on the sides we are going to attach onto the one that's going to be the front there those two lines we are going to attach squares then here on the sides we attach just the one line and then here we attach two sides on that one OK. 
Okay, so I'm now going to show you how to crochet them together, so how to attach them. And then you will clearly see with this line when I'm finished what it looks like. And like I said, you can adjust the size of this so that you can make this opening here the size that you want. So for instance, with my poncho here, I made another one. So I had even more squares here. I had four squares over my shoulders and then the front and the back ones. OK, so also a tip would be to make it bigger and then crochet rounds, making your neck opening smaller. If it is for a child, you can then make it smaller to start with. And as the child grows, you might be able to undo that and then have it bigger for later on. You could also keep on adding rows to the poncho to make it larger. So you could make like an everlasting poncho. Make sure though that you have enough yarn that you can set aside, that you can keep, put it in a special box, put it aside, say, you know, that name's poncho, and then you can keep working on the same poncho, making it smaller and bigger. So making the neck opening smaller will be the next video, okay? I shall publish that as well, because obviously that is a completely different um, technique, but a very useful one if you've made a poncho where the neck opening is too big. So let me show you how to crochet these squares together. So to keep it really simple, we're just going to do a line of single crochet. So make your slip knot, insert your hook, close the loop. And then what you're going to do is hold two squares together, go into the opening of the corner and into the opening of the corner here as well. And do a single crochet. There we go. OK, then go under the V that's closest to you, then under the V of the other square and do a single crochet. And you're going to do this all along the line. Don't do it too tightly because then you might not be able to lay the two squares flat. You will have a tiny ridge but that's OK. Now, the thing is, if you do this in the same colour, of course, it's not going to stand out too much. Mine is going to stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> um, but that's what I want to happen, because I want to show you where my seams are, where I have attached. And this is where I think I sewn in the end. Yeah, where I have attached the squares together. So let's have a look and we're nearly there. And you do it just to the end of the row and then you cut it off and I just sew in both ends. Um, that's the easiest way to do it um, so that you can make any square that you want, basically. OK, so sometimes I do a chain at the end or not. It doesn't really matter in this case. There we go. OK, so that's one set attached. Right. Now we're going to attach the other side to that already. So we're doing this side here. So it's the same thing again. And basically you're making a point here. OK. I mean, I might redo this poncho in a you know, different colour because this is quite bright. <laughs> So slip stitch into the corner, single crochet, and then under the Vs, picking up the stitches. And you could pick up the inner loops maybe, but I'm thinking this is the actual um, top of your poncho. You're going to be pulling this over your head. It just needs to be quite sturdy. Also, if you are thinking of making this into like like I said an everlasting poncho it needs to be sturdy okay you want to do a good job and of course the stitches should tally up I hope they do <laughs> if you've made all your squares the same yeah there we go 
And of course, I am using this square, but in my original uh, poncho, I did use um, di a different, you know, a, I made a cotton poncho like this. And I just had made those squares for some other project. I can't remember as a test to try them out. And I just used those. So, you know, if you have some squares left over and you want to make a poncho, then, you know, go ahead and uh, put them together. Um, like I said, I used four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight will already make a poncho smaller but it will. And then um, I used 12 squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, no, 10 or 12 squares. So, you know, you don't need that many squares to make a poncho. So here we are. So this is our front or our back, whatever it is. And now we are going to start attaching the side and you do this side like so. So same thing again. Slip knot into the corner, do a single crochet and start picking up your V's on both squares. Oops. Yeah, there we go. And to be honest, you know, if you skip one or it doesn't tally up, it does not really matter. You can, if you use the same color, it's not going to be obvious. Um, this is not going to add to your stitch count later on when we start putting the poncho part onto it so it doesn't matter you could also slip stitch them together you know whichever way you like best but i thought this one is a straightforward way of doing it one more here and one more there there we go into the corner voila there we are see look so this is how you are going to continue so i'm going to put another one here and then i'll do this side here as well and then i'll be back to do the last you know the other point okay so we have now made this and it's sort of like a straight corner like so but of course now we are going to create the next back the next point at the back and we have to attach here on the square that we're using for the point and so we are going to attach our squares to it like this and that way that will give you your poncho layout and your head opening so let me just do one side first and then of course the other side. Now this is an important part because you are now sort of determining how big your opening is going to be. If you doubt then make it bigger. Make two more squares and make it bigger and then make the opening smaller again. But if you are sure, then, you know, go ahead and put it together. It's better to make it bigger that you can make it smaller. But you, once you've got it small, you can't make it bigger, basically. So, um, you know, that's the way it works. That one poncho that I have that I made like this, I um, sort of after a year, I decided it was enough that it kept falling off my shoulders and I made the neck opening smaller and it works perfectly now so you know I was able to do that had I made it too small I would have had to take the whole poncho apart because of course the you know what comes below the the actual sort of poncho part you know this part of course is all connected and you can't just undo that so there we go so I've attached this one there and now of course I am not going to attach these two but it's this one here, so the one next to it. So we're also making a corner there, like that, okay? So let me hold it like so. And then I will show you in a moment what it should look like from a bit further away. 
Okay, so into the corner again, picking up the Vs as we have been doing. go voila okay let me cut this off and show you so in a way it doesn't lie flat anymore nicely but if you take this look then it should lie nicely like that so this is going to be over your shoulders this is the front this is the tip at the front or the back and then here we have the same thing tip front and back okay so this is what it looks like now there you go. You can have a look at it like that. And of course, yes, obviously, I would not have used the dandelion for putting this one together. I would have used Cornish blue because that would have made it, you know, <laughs> easier on the eye. But for you to see where my seams are, I think this is the very good example. So you fold you fold the middle square and it should fall like this. So if we look at my lavender and roses poncho here, you see that I have more squares. So this one has to fold. But here, of course, I have the same amount of squares. So I have one, two, three, four on each side. And then I have the middle one. See? And here I have one, two, and a half basically on each side but of course there's three okay so that is how you put the start of the poncho together so your collar almost and now all you need to do is do the lines around it so to create the actual poncho so now we're going to get started in a location that we know where we are which is of course the corner so you'll be doing one corner here, then you move all along the edge to the next corner. And that's going to be at the back, depending on you know how you look at it. Then you come all the way back to the one where you started. So you're doing two corners and then sort of almost like two sides. So let's get started. I'm going to do the same thing as before make my slip knot insert my hook and you're going to be holding it like this so sort of working your way to the base of the poncho and like i said let's start with a corner and the corners in these squares were two double crochets two chains and two double crochets and so we're going to keep on doing those and remember <clears throat> we used to forget about this one here so i'm thinking yeah let's just do the same because you know you don't want to create an overload of stitches and off you go so you're just going to put one stitch into the stitches that you encounter and as you can see here I did the little design as well so you know it all depends on what you want to do um, if it doesn't work out with the design I mean it's easy just to skip a stitch or to add a stitch to be honest you know if you do a design of just with just two multiples it's not too hard to just skip or do whatever you need to do to make it work out okay so I've now come to this location here and you have to decide what you're going to do like I said don't put too many stitches but you will need to put some stitches there so I'm putting one in the chain space one sort of on that seam or I'm trying to get into something there pick up something and I'm doing double crochets and then again, one into that chain space here. Oh, forgot to yarn over. There we go. One into that chain space. See? And that's enough. You don't need more stitches than that. Again, I'm skipping this one and moving on. Or I might not skip that one. It just depends on how I find... That's fine. You see, there's not too big a holes. It's okay. I mean... Like I said, you do not want too many stitches because this is going to grow as well. 
you don't want it to become wavy. So you just continue like this to the end of the row where you meet the corner for the back. Okay, so I've made it to the back and now I am doing a corner here because that's where there is a location for that back corner. And off I go again. I'm skipping one stitch, sometimes I'm not, doesn't matter. As long as you think it's okay to skip it or if there's a hole that's too big, then don't skip it. And this is what it looks like for the moment. So we started here, worked all our way to the other corner there. And now we're going to work our way back to where we started. And this is what it looks like now, like this. I mean, it makes sense. You will soon enough, you will see how it all falls into place. But, you know, sometimes it's difficult to see, but it does work out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to continue along this side and then I will see you there. And I've made it to the end and here I am just going to go under the first V that I see because that first one is closing up for me and then I do a slip stitch and that completes the round. So obviously you can now do uh, however many rounds you want, whatever design you want in those rounds but um, or whatever colour but this is the basic layout of what you need to do for starting a poncho with squares. So here we have it. So I'm holding it like this again. There we go. Look. So that is our first row of what needs to be done to come down. And, um, you know, this is the way you put your squares together. So in the next video, um, I am going to show you how to make this smaller, how to make the neck opening smaller. But of course, um, you know, as you can see in this here, I did quite a few rows. And as you know, this isn't big enough for me. I want to give this to a child or I want to make this to a child size. So I am also going to have to do something to the neck opening here because it does fit for me, but it's going to be too big for a child but it's better to have that than to make it too small overall so like i said many many rows to follow certainly from this one this one would be you know sort of you know would be okay for a small girl but obviously if you want to make it for yourself you're going to have to do quite a lot more rows but of course that is up to you that's however long and however big you want your poncho to be so thank you very much for watching i hope 
that you can work out how to make your own poncho starting off with squares from this tutorial and yeah this hurts my eyes to be honest <laughs> i think um i haven't sewn in the ends because i want to uh, undo this but yes i am going to show you how to do the neck opening in the next video thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye